OneFootball allows you to stay on top of latest transfer information and team news with personalised content. Gain access to football news schedules and results in over 100 leagues to track your favourite clubs and track live play performance scores and stats in unraveled detail during match days. Also gain a front row seat to match day action and videos from your favourite teams. So access everything football by downloading the OneFootball app now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Hello Fantasy Managers, today we have got the team selection for the semi-finals of Euro Fantasy. In today's video, we take a look at how we went in the quarter-finals of Euro Fantasy and look ahead to how the team lines up for the semi-finals. So just before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to show support for the channel and also click the join button down below if you guys want to become our channel member to access various channel perks such as getting behind the scenes content, a personalized shout out when you become a member and access badges and super stickers when we live stream. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So first of all, taking a look at how the team got on in the quarterfinals. In goals, Donnarumma could only get me two points as Italy, non-surprisingly, couldn't keep a clean sheet to Belgium. This was slightly disappointing though as they only conceded one goal and they did defend fairly well. Same with Spinazzola, he could only manage two points as well as he picked up an injury in that Belgium game, but he did get his two points for playing 60 minutes. Moving on to Luke Shaw, he got me 12 points as he was one of the highest scoring players in the team by getting himself two assists and a clean sheet against Ukraine. He was very impressive and I'm very glad that I did bring him into the squad as I was instantly rewarded with this return. Moving on to Sue Fowl, despite not getting a clean sheet against Denmark, he did get himself an assist which was nice to see as he did get an assist to my striker which was Patrick Schick. And the second England defender was Harry Maguire who got himself a goal and a clean sheet as he was assisted by Luke Shaw which was nice to see. He was another one that I did bring in for this match day so I was very impressed with his performance. And to cover for the defence, Joe Kim Mile got me 5 points as he got another assist as them up progressed to the semi-finals. Moving on to the midfielders, Kevin De Bruyne blank once again which is a bit disappointing as he could only manage 2 points as Belgium exited the tournament when they faced Italy. And Raheem Sterling was another one that we brought in for this week who got me 6 points by assisting Harry Kane which is nice to see and he also got that additional bonus point for the clean sheet which is good as well. Moving on to the forwards, it was a very good performance from the lads up top as Lukaku got me a goal with 6 points, Harry Kane got me 10 points, a double to 20 as we had him on captaincy after he scored 2 goals which does make it 3 goals for him for the tournament and Patrick Schick continued his scoring form as he got himself yet another goal assisted by Vladimir Sufal against Denmark. On the bench, Johnston didn't play as he got 0 points, Berardi and Locatelli both didn't get any minutes for Italy as they both got 0, and Sarabia was very disappointing as he got stopped off at half time in Spain's match as he could only manage 1 point. So this meant that for the quarterfinals in Euro Fantasy, we scored a very impressive 77 points, which was very nice to see as now our total points are sitting at 272. So now out of 3.8 million players in the world, we are positioned around the 120k mark as we are making a late push for the top 100k coming into the back end of the tournament. And just having a look at the chip status, we did use our limitless token in match day two and our wildcard token in match day three. So that does mean that we have zero chips left. So now moving on to how the team lines up for the semi-finals of Euro Fantasy. In goals, once again, we have gone with Gianluigi Donnarumma, as he is the second highest scoring keeper in Euro Fantasy. Despite Italy not getting a clean sheet in their last two matches, they still have recorded three clean sheets in the tournament, and with 22 points under the belt of Donnarumma, hopefully he can continue this good form into the fixture against Spain. Spain have been in decent form recently, but Italy have been incredible throughout the tournament so far, and it has been down to their defence being very solid, so hopefully they can get themselves a clean sheet against Spain, as they would expect Italy to advance in this game. With a 47% ownership, it is clear to see why he's one of the top end keepers in the game, and I think he is still fairly good value for his 5.8 million pound price tag in the Italy defence. Moving on to the defenders, starting off with Spinazzola, he is the second Italy defender that we have gone with for this Spain fixture. He is coming in at 5.6 million pounds with a 30% ownership and has recorded a very impressive 22 points so far throughout the tournament. This does make him the 6th highest scoring defender in the game and I am hoping that Italy can get their 4th clean sheet of the tournament against Spain. Throughout the tournament so far, Spinazzola has got himself 2 clean sheets and 2 assists, so hopefully if he can get to the pitch in the Spain fixture, he should be a very good option. It is a big if because he is currently injured as he did pick up a knock in that Belgium game, but I am hoping he can return to full fitness for this Spain fixture. Moving on to John Stones, he is one that has been so consistent throughout the tournament as he has recorded 30 points, picking up 6 points in each of his 5 matches. 
Coming in at £5.8 million with a very high 31% ownership, it is clear to see why he's such a good option to have for the semi-finals, as England face a Denmark side which you would expect them to get another clean sheet in. Obviously, England's defensive solidarity has been the heart of their tournament, and John Stones is getting very good consistent minutes, so for that reason he's in the team. And to cover the defence, we have gone with Joe Kim Mile, who has been very impressive for his £4.9 million price tag. He is currently owned by 23% of managers, and it is clear to see why, as he is such good value in that Denmark defence, recording 28 points so far in the tournament, which does make him the 5th highest scoring defender. So far this tournament, he has got himself 2 goals, 1 assist and 1 clean sheet for Denmark, which is very impressive. Despite facing England who are a difficult opponent, I just think at 4.9 million, he is such a good value option in defence. And now moving on to the midfielders, starting off with Pablo Sarabia. Sarabia is coming in at 6.9 million pounds and is very good value as he has recorded 24 points so far this tournament. This does make him the second highest scoring midfielder and despite only getting one point in match day 5, hopefully he can bounce back in the semi-finals to get himself yet another attacking return. Speaking of, so far he has got himself two goals and two assists throughout the tournament and despite Italy being a fairly solid defensive side, Spain have got themselves over 10 goals in their last three matches. He did only get 45 minutes in his most recent match so I am hoping he can get the full 90 minutes under the belt in this Italy fixture so hopefully he can get an attacking return. Moving on to Raheem Sterling, he stays in the squad once again after he has got himself another return in match day 5 by getting himself an assist which does make it 3 attacking returns on the bounce for Sterling. At 9.8 million pounds below 41% ownership he does seem to be an absolute necessity in that middle of the park as he is the top scoring midfielder in Euro Fantasy. Once again I would expect England to dominate Denmark and they should score a fair few goals which hopefully would mean Sterling getting on the score sheet. Moving on to Lorenzo Insigne he is coming in at 8.6 million pounds with a 30% ownership. Insigne is coming off a goal in his most recent game, as he scored a very nice finish into the top right corner against Belgium in his most recent match, so I am hoping he can continue his very good form against Spain, which I hopefully would expect Italy to advance in. And to cap off the midfielder is Ferran Torres. He is coming in at 8.2 million pounds with a 20% ownership, and has recorded 22 points so far this tournament, which does make him the equal third high scoring midfielder tied with Insigne. And Ferran Torres got himself 90 minutes in his most recent match, which does hold me with a bit of confidence that he can get 90 minutes once again against Italy. And now moving on to the two forwards up top, I'm starting off with Chiro Immobile. Immobile is coming in at 10.2 million pounds with 20 points under the belt so far, making him the second highest scoring forward. Despite not getting himself a goal in his most recent three matches, he has been looking very threatening for Italy, getting into some very nice attacking positions, so for that reason he goes into the squad once again. And his strike partner for the semi-finals will be Alvaro Morata, who has recorded himself 15 points so far, making him the 5th highest scoring forward. There is no doubt that Morata is getting so many chances to score, it's just a matter of whether he puts them away or not, so for that reason he is in the squad once again, so for £9.1 million pounds, I do think he's decent value up top, and hopefully he can convert one of his chances against Italy. And moving on to the bench, it is a full England bench as they do play on the 8th of July, which is the second day of the semi-finals. In goals we have gone with Sam Johnston who is the budget enabler. And then Luke Shaw is part of an England defence triple up as he got himself 12 points in his most recent match as he's recorded a very impressive 33 points throughout the tournament. And moving on to Harry Maguire, he is also coming off 12 points in his most recent game, recording 23 points so far as well. And to cap off the 5th England player in the squad it is Harry Kane, who has been very impressive recently, getting himself 16 points in his last 2 matches, recording 3 goals over this period. I just think England should dominate Denmark and that's why we have gone with a double up on the England attack and a triple up on the England offence as I am expecting to get a clean sheet and score a fair few goals against Denmark. So that's what we've got for today for the team selection of the semi-finals for Euro Fantasy. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to show support for the channel. And once again, click the join button down below if you guys want to become a channel member to access various channel perks such as behind the scenes content and badges. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.